On May 19, 2004, a northbound rock train departed Irving, Texas. This train consisted of four SD-40-2s as power. The two leading locomotives were BNSF Heritage 1 SD-40-2-6351 and ex Santa Fe 5036. Behind it was FURX 8099, XBN, and at the, at the rear was Another FURX unit, 3052, X Canadian Pacific 5632, and BSF SD 40 2 7806, which is also XBN, but with only a BNSF patch. This train was bound to meet another train, a southbound rock train. This rock train consists of three locomotives all on the head end, which were BNSF SD 40 2 6789, another patch BN locomotive. BNSF 142, a GP 60M formerly from Santa Fe. And yet another BNSF SD 40 2 7138, another patched BN. Both trains consist of rock and they were bound to meet at Dorchester Siding. At Dorchester Siding, 6789 was supposed to stop at a red signal and would cross yellow signals to be signals to slow down and stop. However, the signals were dark, which meant dark territory. And with dark territory, trains are giving track warrants. And so now they, ha they couldn't rely on the signals and rather the track warrants. And on the track warrants, they were assigned that 6789 would come to a halt, that 6351 have priority and pass, and 6789 begin moving again. However, unfortunately, this did not happen. As 6789's crew passed Dorchester siding, it did not stop as the track warrants stated, and thus, they were on a direct collision course with 6351. They traveled another four miles from Dorchester siding before seeing the headlights of 6351. They threw on the emergency brakes, and 6351's crew noticed 6789's headlights and threw on the brakes as well. They all hoped that nothing horrible would happen, but it was just far too late for a miracle to happen. The trains collide near the town of Gunter. The rock is spilled everywhere and locomotives are heavily damaged. And the combined speed of when the initial collision happened was in excess of 60 miles per hour. 142 and 7138 ride 6789's long hood like a slide, absolutely destroying the long hood along with the cab. 142 goes off to the right side after falling from 6789's long hood and one of the hopper cars come crashing through the back of its long hood, destroying it. 7138 goes to the left side after riding 6789 and crushing its cab. 6351, after colliding with 6789, suffers lots of damage to its cab and long hood. 8099 only suffers mi minor damage to the front part and its nose. The only reason it did not suffer much damage is that 6351 absorbed lots of the kinetic energy from 6789. Along with the totaled locomotives were the engineer of 6789. He was killed upon impact after 6789 shredded off. Now there was the question, why did this happen? Why did the death of the engineer of 6789 happen? An investigation was launched by the NTSB 
and it did not take long to find the smoking gun of the wreck. 6789's crew did not obey the track warrant they were given. They were given a track warrant because the signals were dark and dark territory is dangerous and so they were given directions. However, 6789's crew did not follow these directions and it's unknown why. However, that mistake from 6789's crew cost the engineer his life. 6351, the head, the head end of the northbound, along with all three locomotives of the southbound, 6789, 142, and 7138 were damaged beyond repair and were scrapped. 8099 was repaired and put back into service, while 3053 and 7806 were not damaged and put back into service. However, you may see 142 on GP60M and Heritage 4. However, that's not the same because that's formerly GP60M159. This is an example of BNSF trying to refill the gaps in their roster due to destroyed locomotives or lost locomotives. However, that is not the same as the one scrapped in Gunter.